So yesterday afternoon I drove up this uh, mining road into the Inyo Mountains and I uh, spent the night at 4,600 feet and today uh, the plan is to head off on an adventure. Uh, rumor has it there's an old cabin uh, on the other side of Keenot Peak perched way up high on a ridge line at about uh, 8,200 feet and uh, I'm going to try to reach it and spend the night there in the dead of winter and uh, it's to be determined whether or not this is actually a good idea so let's get started. All right, so I've got a little over uh, 5,000 feet of climbing to do this morning. I wasn't sure if it was worth uh, carrying the weight of my snowshoes, but I'm going to bring them just in case because it looks like there's a lot of snow up there on uh, the peaks. I'm also going to bring my silky saw because uh, I'm hoping I can find some dead trees and uh, collect some firewood because uh, as far as I know, this cabin has a, a functional fireplace in it and be really nice to cozy up to that uh, this evening. So let's go. Absolutely beautiful day today. I'm excited for this one. But all these mountains have been heavily prospected and uh, the historic mining trail that goes up over Forgotten Pass to the abandoned town of Beverage is uh, further to the south. I considered hiking up that, but uh, recently dug drainage canal uh, severed that road access. So I decided to come up here to Union Wash instead and I just like invented a route. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but yeah, it was uh, two winters ago that I hiked to Beverage and stayed overnight in that uh, 1800 stone cabin, which was amazing and something that I'd consider doing again in the future. It was that good. I can see this cliff on uh, satellite imagery. I'm gonna try to bypass it by going up around to the right. This is a lot steeper than it looks while on this loose rock and snow. Maybe if I can get my feet on uh, solid rock, it might be better. This does not feel safe, but I'm doing it. Oh no, what am I getting myself into? Alright, well we made it past that part. Looking forward to doing that on the way back, but not really. I think I'm going to stop and have a coffee before I uh, continue on here. It starts to get steep. So while I was sitting there having my coffee, decided to change my approach plan. And I veered to the left, climbing up this ridge line now. I just... <laughs> I just don't trust that valley anymore. I think it's going to take me somewhere that I'm going to suffer a whole lot more than what's necessary. Well, I brought them. Might as well try to use them. If anything, uh, they'll help keep my feet dry because the snow is uh, really wet up here. I think that's Forgotten Pass right there. Uh, I feel like my best bet is to like veer up and around that way behind the mountain. Almost to the top of the ridge line. Another 200 feet of uh, tedious climbing in this wet snow. And it's all downhill to the cabin. Really hope there's a cabin there. Well, it turns out there is so much more climbing involved. I wanted to be able to walk straight across the backside of this mountain, but it's not gonna happen with all this snow. So I'd have to like traverse this ridge line for another mile and hope for the best that I could down climb this spine that leads off to the east. It's too far, there's gonna be no cabin coziness tonight. So I'm gonna go down there a bit, try to find a flat spot and set up camp.
I also have some chunks of beef and beans and carrots. I'm going to add this in. Yeah, it would be a real doozy of a hike to try and reach this cabin from uh, this side in the middle of winter. I think if I'm going to try to do it again, I'll go down around to the other side in uh, Saline Valley, start there. I have a much greater chance of actually seeing this uh, fabled cabin. All right, you guys, that's uh, all for today. I'm just going to try to stay warm tonight on the side of this mountain, and I will see you in the morning. Good night. We slept good last night having a late start. It's 10 a.m., but now that the sun's up, it's uh, nice and warm, and Rocco is happy to run around uh, without her jacket on. She's doing good. But I figure uh, since I'm right here, might as well do a summit on Mount Inyo. It's, it's not too far, and I've done most of the climbing involved, so we'll do that, then head back to the van a different way so I, I don't have to go through all that nastiness once again. There's no reason to carry all the weight, uh, my heavy backpack, all the way up there, so I'll just leave it here, fetch it on the return. Even though the cabin thing didn't work out, I feel like I perfectly planned a trip to get up Mount Inyo. Like there's no way I could day hike this thing. Not in these conditions. I feel like even in the summer, it's an accomplishment to day hike this mountain. It's a big one. Yeah, there's a bit of scrambling to do. I should be on the top of it. So we have the full panoramic of Death Valley National Park and that little dark spot is the Saline Valley Warm Springs. Not sure if anyone uh, would be there right now because all the roads down there are in very bad condition. You can just hear the vague rumble of fighter jet engines as they train over this whole area. And then uh, that's Keenot Peak and to the right of it that's Owens Lake which is looking really full right now. Maybe all the storms lately have helped to uh, top it up. Then that's Lone Pine and uh, Mount Whitney, the highest point in the lower 48. And then spinning around to the north, looking towards Bishop. Just a really beautiful area. This is all military airspace, so no drones allowed. But it's a long slog to get back to my home, so I'll see you there. So yesterday afternoon, I drove my van through that canal trench and uh, it wasn't so bad, I got through it no problem. Then I drove my van further up this road and I've parked it in a spot where I'm not worried about leaving it for a night, it feels safe there. Yeah, I've had about four days off to recover my poor tired body and I feel stronger than ever, ready for round two. So this time I'm gonna try to take the, uh, the historic route that the miners took on their way to uh, Beverage. I feel like my best chance of success though is from the other side starting in Saline Valley but tried to get down there a couple days ago and North Pass was completely snowed in. I just I don't think there's any way to get down to uh, Saline Valley right now. So we'll try this and hopefully it works. The town of Beverage operated from uh, 1880s, 1910 and after over 100 years this trail is still in amazing condition. So much better than having to bash straight up this scree. This trail's in great shape, very easy to follow, almost on the same quality as something you'd see in a national park like Yosemite. I can't believe this doesn't get any recognition from the local communities. They basically dug a trench and severed the road access. No signage, no nothing. I mean, in my opinion, I feel like this could be on the same tier as something like the, the Chilku Trail. Like, look at this view. Plus, this takes you to an actual abandoned town with a, an 1800 stone cabin you can sleep in and all this old mining machinery. I feel like I've, I've just uncovered one of the greatest hidden gems of Owens Valley. So at this intersection, if I turn right, I'd go up and over uh, Forgotten Pass towards Beverage, but I'm gonna go left. I gotta climb up uh, towards Keenot Peak and uh, the cabin is on the other side of that ridge. I really wish I could fly my drone right now. Take a look ahead, make sure this is actually taking me to something. It's all just guesswork. 
I have a topographic map and some satellite imagery, but I really don't know if I'm just wasting my energy right now. And it would be so nice to spend <laughs> tonight in the cabin, not have to do round three, because it will be very hard for me to go down to Saline Valley and try this again. It appears like this is going to work out for me. I'll be up on top of the ridgeline soon. And then it's just whether or not I can walk down the backside of the mountain to reach that cabin. I keep sandbagging myself this morning. I think I said it's only going to be like 1,500 meters of climbing to get up over the top. Meanwhile, 2,000 meters still going up. No end in sight. The snow coverage on this side is not too bad, so brought the snowshoes for no reason today. I'll just leave them there and carry on. And if I zoom in with my camera, I can see it down there. Maybe another hour to reach it. I'm just trying to go slow and really drag my feet. It's easy to break trail when you're going downhill. So then uh, tomorrow on my way back up, I'll have a nice pathway to follow. Okay, maybe two hours to reach the cabin. It's been some very unpleasant terrain. Try and hike through. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the Keynot Ridge Cabin. Took me uh, almost nine hours to get here. This is an absolute time capsule. I think Rocco likes it. Lots of stuff to sniff in here. Well, I'm here and uh, I'm gonna spend the night. So let's get this uh, fireplace roaring, get it all heated up in here. <laughs> Coziness overload, I tell you what, when I first started up the fireplace, uh, I completely smoked up the building. I thought I was going to have to sleep outside, but now that it's good and hot, it's keeping the air clean inside. And I don't see any signs of like mice or rats in here, uh, so I think it's safe to take one of these beds and uh, sleep in here, stay cozy. I had trouble finding information on this cabin on the internet, but according to this paper, this dates back to like the early 1900s. So this cabin could be like 120 years old. I was under the impression it was like from the 1960s, but to be here in something this remote and this historic, uh, it just feels incredible to be here. And they've also uh, found artifacts in the area that date back to like the 1850s. So there's been quite a lot of human activity around here over the years. And I'm really surprised how many uh, visitors come up here. There's over like 20 entries in uh, the guest book in 2023. And big respect to this woman, Kim Gardner. She's hiked up here like 25 times. She must really enjoy the suffering, but I understand it. And it's, it's totally worth it to come up here. I'll put my entry in here. I'm the first of uh, 2024. And yeah, I'm just going to enjoy my night and stay warm.
Oh, we did it. We made it through the night. Didn't sleep so good, but it doesn't matter. It was more about the experience of uh, being here in a place that I've wanted to visit for a number of years. There's some uh, mining ruins and old machinery on the side of the mountain over there, but I don't think I can make it with uh, all the snow out there. And I'm kind of in a hurry to get going this morning because there's a nice crust on the snow and it should make my travel back up a whole lot easier. When I came down last night, uh, my boots were soaking wet in that, uh, that wet snow. But yeah, I'll just take a, another little look around here before I go and uh, it'll be time to climb back up this mountain. Yeah, the miners that were up here long ago who stacked up these big rocks to build this fireplace, they've very likely moved on to their next lives, but it's pretty amazing we can still come up here and enjoy their work. And uh, if you look, you can see how new lumber is mixed in with the old, so there's been a lot of effort to maintain this place. And uh, I'm sure if it wasn't, it would be a pile of rubble like most of the other ones, but it's time to uh, start hiking on out of here. Ay, 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 this is gonna take a while to get back up this. If I got the energy, might as well try to bag the summit on Keenot Peak while I'm up there. But last night uh, I had downloaded on my phone uh, the latest episode from Channel 5 where Andrew <laughs> illegally crossed from Mexico into the States. That was something to watch. <laughs> Highly recommended. He's, he's my favorite person on the internet. Kim Gardner, the legendary mountain crusher from Bishop. Look how many times she's been up here. Amazing. As of right now, I've climbed uh, 3,000 meters, about 10,000 feet, and I'm thankful that it's all downhill from here back to the van. I'm gonna need a few days off to recover after this one, but beautiful day to be hiking in the Inyo Mountains, I tell you what. Another adventure wrapped up and even in this year of 2024 that cabin feels super remote and it's very difficult to reach. I can't imagine like over a hundred years ago building that and living up there. I'm not sure if there's ever a reliable source of water up on uh, that ridge line. So if they had to haul it up there from beverage that'd be a full days of work just to do that. But I'm completely thrashed. I gotta go find some food and uh, go on a binge spree and uh, get myself cleaned up. Once again, but I got a family meetup uh, coming this week, so if I don't report in for like a week or two, that's what I'm up to, and um, I'll see you when I get a new adventure all, all wrapped up. So thanks for coming along on this one. Hope you enjoyed this adventure. Hope everyone's doing good, and I'll see you in the next one.